Are we starting to have fun yet? We're on problem number 81 of physics GRE GR0877. A uniform disc with a mass of M and a radius of R rolls without slipping along a horizontal surface and ramp. As shown above, the disc has an initial velocity of V. What is the maximum height H to which the center of mass of the disc rises? So we know that the kinetic energy, uh, the Ke total, equals 1 half mv squared plus 1 half i w squared, uh, w being omega. Um, and we're going to go back to our first page. I promised you we would use it. Our moment of inertia of a disk is on the first page of your test booklet. I equals 1 half mr squared, where w omega equals the angular velocity equals v over r. But now we know that the gravitational potential energy equals the kinetic energy, and so we have mgh equals 3 fourths mv squared. So doing some algebra, we see that h equals 3 fourths v squared over g, and that is answer b. 82. A mass m is attached to a massless spring fixed at one end. The mass is confined to move in a horizontal plane and its position is given by the polar coordinates r and theta. Both r and theta can vary. If the relaxed length of the spring, of the spring is s and the force constant is k, what is the Lagrangian L for the system? So the spring potential energy we know equals one half kx squared where in this problem x equals r minus s and our potential energy equals one half k, the quantity r minus s squared. So our kinetic energy equals one half mv squared equals one half m times x dot squared plus y dot squared. Um, and those are time derivatives in polar coordinates. So be sure to know your polar coordinates. Here they are down here. And so our kinetic energy in polar coordinates equals one half m r dot squared plus one half m r squared theta dot squared. And our Lagrangian L equals T minus V equals our kinetic energy minus our potential energy. And that is answer D. 83, a mass M attached to the end of a massless rod of length L is free to swing below the plane of support as shown in the figure above. The Hamiltonian for this system is given by, and there's the equation, where theta and phi are defined as shown in the figure. On the basis of Hamilton's equations of motion, the generalized coordinate or momentum that is constant in time is, and so one thing to remember, um, for momentum to be constant in time, dp dt uh, equals negative partial of h divided by partial of q, and that's got to equal zero. Uh, where Q represents phi, which is the only varying position coordinate, and that is right here, this one. Um, so P dot of phi must equal the negative partial of H divided by the partial of phi. It must equal zero. Therefore, P of phi must be constant, um, because remember, the derivative of a constant is zero. Answer E. 84. A rod of length L and mass M is placed along the x-axis with one end at the origin as shown in the figure above. The rod has linear mass density lambda, I hate that we use lambda, but lambda equals 2m over L squared times x, where x is the distance from the origin. Which of the following gives the x-coordinate of the rod's center of mass? So the center of mass integrated from x equals 0 to x equals L is x of c, x the center of mass, um, equals 1 over m times the integral of x dm. Now let's convert that to dx, some algebra again, and then we're going to integrate it, and we're going to get x of c equals 2 over l squared, x cubed, raise that to the third power and divide it by 3. And here, in this case, x equals l, because we integrated from x equals 0 to x equals l. So the center of mass equals 2 over l squared times the quantity l cubed over 3, which reduces to 2l over 3. And that is answer E. Problem number 85, a particle is in an infinite square well potential with walls at x equals zero and x equals L. If the particle is in the state psi of x equals A sine quantity three pi x over L, where A is a constant, what is the probability that the particle is between x equals one third L and x equals two thirds L? So the wave function is normalized through the integral from zero to L and um, a equals the, quant the square root of the quantity 2 divided by l. So now that we know the constant, we can integrate the problem, integrate the problem from 1 thirds l to 2 thirds l. So 1 equals the integral of a squared quantity sine squared 3 pi x over l dx, and that equals 2 over l, 
and so that came our a, we just squared it, so it became 2 over l, a squared, times the integral of sine squared quantity 3 pi x over l dx. So this, this looks very challenging, but we can remember that sine squared of x equals 1 half times the quantity 1 minus cosine of 2x. And so um, cosine squared of n pi x, so 6 pi x, 3 pi x, 2 pi x, uh, always is going to equal 1. And um, so when you integrate from 1 third L to 2 thirds L, cosine squared of 2 pi minus cosine squared of pi equals 1 minus 1 equals 0. So we can drop that term right there, and we know that it's just going to be, and when we plug that in there, you see where the numbers come from. So it's just going to be this one term that's important for us. Um, so right here, this, this, whole, this whole sine square root of 3 pi x over L just reduces to 1. So 1 equals, and not that one, 1 equals a squared over 2 integral of dx. Remember, because this is 1, so 1 times dx. And that equals 1 over L um, times the quantity. And then we just integrated integral of dx. So from our final length to our initial length, minus our initial length. So 1 over L times the quantity of 2 thirds L minus 1 third L. And that just simply equals 1 third. And that is answer B. 86, which of the following are the eigenvalues of the Hermitian matrix? And there it is, 2i, negative i, and 2. So eigenvalues are solutions to lambda for the equation determinant of a minus lambda i equals 0, where i is the identity matrix, and the diagonals are 1s. So there they are right there, the diagonals are 1s. So here the determinant of a minus lambda i, we just, from our... From our diagonals, we just subtract lambda times the identity matrix, and so we have 2 minus lambda, so i remains the same, minus i remains the same again, 2 minus lambda. And then we remember that the determinant of a matrix A, B, C, D equals A, D minus B, C. So the determinant of the matrix above equals um, A, well, so a d a times d equals 2 minus lambda squared um, minus b c so b c so that'd be minus minus i times i and so that equals the quantity of 2 minus lambda squared plus i squared we know that i squared equals minus 1 and so we know that um, so the determinant of a matrix remember 0 or the eigenvalues. So 0 equals 2 minus lambda, that quantity squared plus i squared, i squared equals minus 1. So quantity 2 minus lambda squared equals 1, and plug in our values. So you see that 1 would work because 2 minus 1 is just 1. 1 squared equals 1, yes. Um, for example, plug in 0. 0 does not work. 2 squared does not equal 1. Um, plug in 3, though. 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. 1 equals 1, so your answer is B, 1 and 3. Number 87, consider the polyspin matrices sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z, and the identity matrix I given above. The commutator sigma x comma sigma y equals sigma x, sigma y minus sigma y, sigma x is equal to which of the following? So we need to know how to do our matrix multiplication. So uh, this matrix, i comma 0, 0 comma minus i, minus, minus i comma 0, 0 comma i. So i minus, minus i is 2i, 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 0 again is 0, and then minus i, minus i is minus 2i. So we can factor out a 2i up here, and so we're left with just still 0 and 0 right here, and a 1 and a minus 1 right here. Well, 1 and a minus 1 right there, and a 0 and a 0 is sigma z. And so that actually right there is answer D. Number 88, a spin, 1 half particles in a state described by the spinner, chi equals A times the matrix 1 plus I. 2, uh, where A is a normalization constant, the probability of finding the particle with spin projecting S of Z equals minus one half H bar is, so we need to note that our complex conjugate, 
chi star equals a times one minus i, where the normal chi is one plus i, the complex conjugate is one minus i. The two remains unchanged. So chi star chi equals a squared times the matrix one minus i two um, times the other matrix one plus i two. And that equals, when you multiply it out, a squared times the matrix two, four. And so we're gonna normalize it where chi star chi equals one equals a squared times the matrix two, four. And so a squared equals two plus four, and so that equals one. So our normalization constant a equals one over the square root of six. So let's make chi, uh, let's put it in terms of spin up and spin down. So remembering that chi equals a times the matrix one plus i, two. So we can break this down into a times one plus i, and so spin up would be one, zero, and spin down would be two a, zero, one, where here our two comes right there. So the probability of spin down, zero, one plus i, so a is zero, uh, one plus i plus two a squared, uh, remembering that you have to square for probabilities. And so 2a squared equals, remembering what a equals, 2 times the square root of 6, that quantity squared. And we can turn, we can say that 2 is also equivalent to the square root of 4. So the square root of 4 divided by the square root of 6, that quantity squared simply equals 4 over 6, equals 2 thirds. Answer D. 89, an electron of total energy E in the region x less than zero is moving in the positive x direction. It encounters a step potential at x equals zero. The wave function for x less than or equal to zero is given by, here it is down below, x greater than zero is given by this. So which of the following gives a reflection coefficient for the system? So interestingly enough, the reflection of light is similar. It is just going to be r equals, the reflection equals the quantity n2 minus n1 divided by n2 plus n1, that quantity squared. Um, but here n2 equals k1, which is like saying that the inside of the well is like the more dense medium and that the outside of the well, n1 equals k2, is like the less, less dense medium, for example, air. That is just answer D. And just as a side note, the transmission is going to equal 1 minus r, remembering what r was. Number 92, thin concentric spherical conducting, sh conducting shells are arranged as shown in the figure above. The inner shell has a radius of A, charge positive Q, and is at zero electrical potential. The outer shell has radius B and charge minus Q. If R is the radial distance from the center of the spheres, what is the electrical potential in the region 1, which is A less than R and R less than B, and in region 2, where R is greater than B? So for region 1, the integral is from A to R, so the integral is from uh, so it's the integral of minus e dr, and that equals the integral of minus q dr divided by 4 pi e o r squared. And that's the electric field we're converting to units with charge. And so then when you integrate that, that equals q over 4 pi e o r final minus q over 4 pi e o r initial. And that just equals q over 4 pi e o times the quantity 1 over r minus the quantity 1 over a. So for region 2, we're integrating from a to b. So it's the integral of a to b, negative e dr minus b to r uh, times minus e dr. And so for region two, r is greater than b. Um, so for minus e dr equals zero for regions outside of b. And the integral of a to b minus e dr equals q over four pi e o r final minus q over four pi e o r initial. And so that just equals q over 4 pi e o times the quantity of 1 over b minus the quantity of 1 over a. And so that is answer d.